but the Earth's atmosphere was still very different from the one we breathe today. It contained high levels of carbon dioxide, a gas with a key ability to absorb and hold on to heat. Carbon dioxide still makes up 95% of Venus's atmosphere. It superheated our twin planet to the point where its water boiled away into space. And yet, this didn't happen on Earth. David Crisp believes that was down to a chance event. If Earth kept all of its initial atmosphere, it probably would have turned out a lot more like Venus. But that didn't happen. We were the victims of a very lucky accident. Earth's big break came four and a half billion years ago. Back then, the solar system wasn't limited to the eight planets it has today. Instead, a swarm of protoplanets, or planetesimals, orbited the sun like bees around a honeypot. One Mars-sized body was heading straight for Earth. In a colossal cosmic collision, it slammed into our planet, creating our moon, and according to CRISP, removing the atmosphere that still blights Venus. Okay, the tennis ball on the string represents the early Earth during the accretion phase of the solar system, just before the moon forming impact. And what I'm going to do now is to accrete a little bit of the atmosphere onto the top of the ball. A little later on, uh, an object about the size of Mars uh, passes a little bit too close by and there's a collision which removes a large amount of the material that is accreted onto the Earth most of it that made up the atmosphere is just gone. This ancient event was the defining moment for our atmosphere. With the original deadly gas mix blasted away, our planet's air could slowly evolve into what it is today. We were left with this atmosphere made of molten rock and, and vaporous rock. Uh, it took millions of years for that atmosphere to fall out uh, and to be replaced by an atmosphere made up of nitrogen and uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor. These new gases came from above and below. Volcanic eruptions spewed out fresh stocks of nitrogen and carbon dioxide from within the planet's molten core. While the vital element of water may have been delivered by icy comets, each impact bringing a new supply of frozen liquid. But the air still lacked one of its key ingredients. One of the things that was missing is free oxygen, uh, molecular oxygen, O2, the stuff we breathe. Dr. Janet Seifert of Rice University in Texas searches for the event that produced the atmosphere's final element. We know from the rock record that for the first half of Earth's life, there was no oxygen in the atmosphere whatsoever. There were greenhouse gases like methane and CO2, but there was no oxygen. But the rock record shows a sudden change, dated to around 2.5 billion years ago evidence of the first oxygen in the atmosphere. The gas was released by a humble microscopic living organism called cyanobacteria. Well, it turns out cyanobacteria are the only things that can actually produce oxygen. So we know that at some point cyanobacteria colonized enough of the planet in order to produce enough oxygen that it became resident in the atmosphere. The microbes that produce the oxygen are distant ancestors of modern bacteria. Bacteria that Seifert finds living in the barren primeval landscape of Cuatro Cienegas, northern Mexico. Over three billion years ago, they experienced a sudden genetic shift. They discovered something that no other group of organisms on the planet has ever discovered. They've learned how to do oxygenic photosynthesis. They take sunlight and CO2 and use the energy of the sunlight to split water and make oxygen. 
And that's so important for us today because oxygen is what we breathe in. It's what made a difference to our planet that's not like any other planet in our solar system. As the microbes multiplied and spread, the gas built up in the air, transforming the planet in a process known as the Great Oxidation Event. Oxygen is very powerful. The world gets turned upside down. Everything has to begin to adapt to now a, a completely new atmosphere where oxygen is dominating. First, the oxygen reacted with the oceans, causing iron within them to form rusty deposits on the sea floor. Then its effects reached dry land. It reacted with soil and rock, giving them a reddish, rusty tinge. And once these minerals had absorbed their fill of oxygen, the gas began to gather in the atmosphere with dramatic consequences for life. <laughs> 